Hi guys. What is up? We have a different setup today. I will explain in just a second. Let me hit live over here on Instagram. Hello everybody. You guys, so today we are live streaming from Instagram, you know, normally with my phone, blah, blah, blah. That one's normal. But today on YouTube, we are, um, let's say vlogging. We are live streaming from my camera, like my, my normal, like actual camera. Hey, Latanya girl. Hey, girl, you're here. Yes. Love this. Hey, you guys, what's up? So I am, yeah, I'm like. I keep trying to say vlogging. My mind is just, ugh. Uh, we are live streaming from my camera. And I've been trying to get this set up, like, working for the past, like, week. And now it's working. So if you guys are on YouTube, you see what I'm talking about. But I'm having to remember because my monitor is, like, up here. So if I'm looking up here, that's why. And then my, um, oh, that was all in the camera. And then my, <laughs> my actual camera is down here. So it's just a lot going on, Okay. Yes, um, I'm in, yeah, you're in bed watching, <laughs> uh, wait, recording some reels? Yes, I am using Ecamm. I am using Ecamm. Um, I always use Ecamm to go live. Hey, hey, um, I think, yeah, hey, Larissa girl. Yes, I'm going live via Ecamm over here on YouTube, and it's just so weird because, like, maybe I need to move this down. That way I'm not looking all the way up because that's weird. <laughs> To like one on and the lighting, I'm not loving it. Anyway, you guys, today we're here to talk about um, if God called you to start your business, why are you literally playing so small on social media? And I wanted to talk about this because today um, Zara actually just joined. Hey, Zara, girl. I was talking with Zara about this earlier. Um, you said, I'm saying, I'm here listening in the background. Okay, in recording content. Got you, girl. Got you, got you, got you. Got you. Okay, perfect. Um, so actually, I was talking with one of my business besties earlier. And I was telling her, I was like, you know, whenever it comes to our 2023 plans, and I'm going to make a whole video over this, of like what this looks like, what are like, what I want kind of our objectives to be is in terms of revenue is really like 40% coming from the coaching program, 60% coming from content. So for example, is content in terms of YouTube revenue, I, I now make money via reels, like Anyway, um, but it's not that I'm not don't despite, you know, small beginnings. But anyway, all that to say is I make the most money from YouTube. So whenever I say content, like the content bucket, that's YouTube, that's Instagram. That is um, if we start making money on TikTok, we'll see what well, that's a whole other thing. Um, but brand deals, anything that is like that related. Hey, hey, what's up? Um, so, yeah, what like that over there. Okay. And then the other 40%, which is coaching is literally from our actual coaching program. And that's the one thing that feeds in there. Content, it's a whole bucket over here of different streams and also affiliate marketing um, and all those different things. It kind of like the influencing content creator vibes over here in the 60%. All this to say, that took so long to freaking explain. Hey y'all, what's up? All that to say is the 60% bucket. I want our content. I want that to be our content for the year. And I'm saying that to say, you guys, is content is absolutely king. The creator economy is absolutely booming and it's only going to get better, okay? It's only getting better. People are getting paid $12,000 to post one TikTok video if they have the right audience. So listen, if you have been waiting to create content and you've been like dragging your feet, I highly recommend for you to at least just start, okay? Like just freaking start. So anyway, we want majority of our revenue to really be coming from content creation. And why? Kind of my methodology behind this is, hey girl, my methodology behind this is YouTube is recession proof. You know what I mean? Like people are going to be advertising their advertising their stuff and that, you know, we get money through placing ads on our videos. People are going to be advertising their stuff for God knows how long, like forever, like forever. If you want sales, you have to have marketing. And so anyway, we want like 60% of our revenue coming from our actual content because that's why I love YouTube so much. It's because not only am I putting out content, I also have the ability to get paid off that content that, this, that, that then is also providing value and then converting some of you all from finding my channel or finding our, our online community over into being a part of our community over into actual like clients and customers. Do you see what I'm saying? So I think YouTube is the like nowhere near any other social media platform, you guys. It is the closest to like TV. 
it is the closest thing to that. And if you notice a lot of TikTokers are now like, hey guys, it's hard to make a YouTube channel. Like, you know what I mean? So it's usually like YouTube is like the, the, the top of the totem pole, which is why I want to really like ramp up that level of revenue. Anyway, random, random update, but it does kind of play into like what we're talking about today, which is content. And I feel like so many times people shy away from the actual content creation, not realizing the power of which you guys, you posting your content online, it is literally like your public facing, not your resume, but kind of sort of, it's like your public, public facing brand. I can't tell you guys how many speaking engagements I've gotten just because I'm active in like putting content out on YouTube. It is like literally doing the work for me, right? Um, I can't tell you how many brand deals I've gotten, like four-figure brand deals, four, multiple four-figure brand deals, you guys. I'm not going to reveal the actual number, but okay, all right? Four-figure brand deals that I've gotten that have reached out to me because of my channel. You know what I mean? So it's like, I say that to say, you guys, your, what we're going to say, it's like your walking resume, your content and you putting it out there, not just for your business and not just for your brand overall. It is huge across the board, which is why we are ride or die whenever it comes to YouTube. We're ride or die when it comes to content overall. Okay. Hey, Christy, what is up? And so as, as we're going, you guys, like, let me know what questions you guys have. So if you guys are new to me, hey, what's up? Sorry, I am a marketing coach, a content creator, as well as an influencer. That's what we're kind of talking about today and the power of social media. Specifically, this is about your business, but it's, it all goes into hand um, in terms of like why content is so freaking important, okay? And I know I just know so many people who are like, oh man, I really want to start a YouTube channel. Oh man, I really want to start posting my content. The time is now, I promise you. I promise you. If I would have started... Yesterday, I would have been regretting it and be like, dang, I should have started way back when I actually did. You see what I'm saying? So, like, the time is going to pass anyway. So, why not? Hey, <laughs> why not start now in terms of your actual content? So, not only is your content, you guys, you're pretty much like your digital, like your very public facing resume and shows you what you can do. You guys, I've been asked to, to actually like host certain talk shows. I'm not going to reveal the actual name. It's a show that I absolutely love. I've been asked to like do certain engagements like that, not with me reaching out first. I had no idea they were interested. I had no idea anything. They reached out to me because of my channel and because of the content I was putting out there and because it was an active channel. Hey, Laurie, girl. And so anyway, I said that to say like you posting content and you actually being active on social media is far bigger than what you may think it is. So there's one side where it's like actually building your brand where people can find you, they know about you, you're way more visible. But then there's the other side that as you have a business, you're using that as organic marketing for your business, okay? We don't use ads, okay? We thought about it. We thought long and hard about it. And honestly, it just wasn't the move, though for a minute I thought it was. But we are really strictly like organic content, you guys. And it has been very successful successful for us. And that's why we go the organic content way. Because not only the actual like the the client and customer side of things, but like I said, it is your literal like public facing online resume for people who are looking for speakers for their women's conferences, people who are speak or looking for speakers for, I don't know, their TV show, like YouTube channel, people who are looking for that stuff, they're looking like and they can find you through your actual content without you actually ever having to have a conversation with them. So if you're considering getting on social media, like this is why I'm telling you it's, it's your time, especially if God has given you something to speak about and to speak up about. You guys, I used to feel like, yes, hey, hey. Um, I used to feel like, Okay, I had a cousin of mine tell me a long time ago or like whisper to somebody like, oh, she's really opinionated, blah, 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 blah. And I really took that to heart for a while. And to be very honest with you, I am. I am very opinionated. But God the other day really kind of flipped that around. You know what I mean? Like what the enemy may try to speak into somebody else and speak to you and use it for harm, God flipped it around and used it for good. And so one thing that I like that he spoke to me in that moment was what one person may see as opinionated, the other person may see as like, really good content that's coming out of someone's mouth you know what I mean like who you know what I mean like like you speaking your like not truths I, I really believe there's like one truth but like you speaking your side and your story and who you are and your perspectives on things while one person may see that as opinionated another person may see that as yo I needed this person to speak up and I need to hear what they have to say 
You see what I'm saying? And so anyway, like flipping that narrative. And so anyway, whenever it comes to your content, I want you guys to be sharing your perspective. Like, why did you build the business that you built? And if God called you to build the business that you built, why are you playing so daggum small? Do you feel me? Do you hear me? You know what I mean? Like, do, why are you playing so small on social media if you know that God has called you to start this business? And I understand. And let's talk about it really quick. I want to know what are some things, what are some reasons that keep you off of social media? And like, I want to dive into this. Like, what are some of the reasons? Like, I know before I've heard so many different things. So I'll list off some of them. Um, one is I'm afraid of being vulnerable on social media. Two, I don't have a good background. Three, I don't have the right camera. Four, um, I don't like the sound of my voice, which I had never heard that one before, before I actually heard that one. Um, five, I don't know. Like, there's literally so many reasons that I know people say that they're afraid of being on social media. Oh, maybe, like, I don't want my friends and family to see. I don't want it to be, you know, seen by them or whatever. Um, there's so many reasons that keep people off of social media. So I would love to know you guys' reasons. I would love to know y'all's reasons um, as to what keeps you guys off of social media. Because, yes, there are trolls. Yes, there are haters. Yes, there are them crazy people that will comment on your stuff. But I promise you the block button is more powerful than you could ever imagine. Amen and hallelujah. Okay? Use your block button and be the steward over your actual community. You know what I mean? Like, you are the leader of your community. And so, Yeah. Um, what is your first name? Uh, Jero, what blog? What is your first name? I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Can y'all see the difference in my quality over here on, on YouTube? Let me know. Instagram, pause for a second. Can, can y'all see like the quality over here? Uh, I really hope my freaking camera does not die and play me over here as I'm saying that. Um, it has like two bars and usually two bars means it's grasping on a life um you said imposter syndrome sorry i gotta check it you said imposter syndrome break that down for me who else struggles with imposter syndrome who else struggles with imposter syndrome who else struggles with uh, christina hey christina girl uh who else struggles with imposter syndrome and like what do you feel like is causing you to experience imposter syndrome right because let me be real there are real imposters out here but most likely like probably 9.7 out of 10 times, that's not you. And so I say all that to say is like whenever it comes to being an expert within your industry, how I look at it is experts talk about what they know and don't talk about what they don't. And that can help you. It can help you overcome imposter syndrome. Another thing whenever it comes to imposter syndrome is I want you to make a list. I want you to make an evidence list. And we talked about this the other day on, I think, Tuesday's live video. Is I want you to make, okay, perfect. Yes, you said you also struggle with imposter syndrome. So I want you guys to make a list. And whenever you're struggling with like imposter syndrome, like surrounding whatever, like whatever thing it is that imposter syndrome is focused on. So say for you, it's content creation, say for you, whatever that is. Um, let's just say, for example, it's content creation. I want you to write down all the different things that are evidence to why you are qualified to talk about what you want to talk about on, on social media, to show up for your business on social media. Like what are, what are, like, I want you to write down all the things that qualify you. So for example, for me, Whenever I started as like doing marketing content, I had a lot of imposter syndrome, you guys. Because I was used to being the the hair care girl and the faith based content girl, and stepping into creating marketing content. Though I wasn't new to marketing, um, I did have a lot of imposter syndrome, but I knew I wasn't an imposter. But it still didn't take away that feeling. And so I made an evidence list. Okay, I ha I literally have a four year degree in this field. Um, I've ran organizations where I was their overall like marketing gal, uh, like, you know what I mean? Like I did social media for my sorority. I was a president over this, like whatever. Um, I have a degree in this. Like I've done marketing professionally for seven years. Like I've made a list of all the different things that proved why my thoughts around where the imposter syndrome was centering from. I wrote down all the things that proved that wrong. And that really helped me. And it also helps like look back on it. Um, you said, oh, we're going to get to you as well. We're going to get to yours as well. I'll just put yours up on the screen. Um, oh, my God. I hope my camera doesn't die over here, y'all. Yes. Making a list. Yes. It's a, it's, yes. Do it. It's amazing. Um, you said, at times, I question myself and what information I share. I know the stuff. Yes. And then I'm like, what if somebody calls me out? It shows that I, oh, that I don't know what I'm talking about. Literally the definition of imposter syndrome, a thousand percent. And here's, here's my take on that. 
is you're sharing from your perspective. You're sharing from your, your like story. You're sharing from what you know. You're not sharing something that you've copied from another coach. And if you are, then you could possibly be an imposter, right? But if you're sharing from your own experience and you're sharing from your own story, you're sharing from who you are and what you've learned and what you know, and what you've studied, you know what I mean? Like in your expertise, then you are not an imposter. And, it, and literally it is a fear of like, oh my God, this person who has been doing this longer than me is going to call me out and say I'm wrong. We can, they can do, like, say, what's the worst that could happen if they did that? I would just be like, hey, bro, we got different, we got different opinions on this. You know what I mean? Like, there's multiple ways to market. There's multiple ways to raise your dog. I don't know. There's multiple ways to make vegan food. You know what I mean? So, like, just because one person does it one way doesn't mean you have to do it that way as well. There's multiple ways to do it. Even when it comes to, even when it comes to God, like, I have a different experience than you may have had with God. You know what I mean? Maybe you were hurt along the way, which is understandable. But when we're talking from two different perspectives, right? And so, but we're both sharing our, our stories. Obviously, there's like one truth. We all know that. So let's not, you know, okay. There's one truth of it. But me sharing my perspective of my relationship with God, nobody can come in and say, that's wrong, you're wrong. Because that's my experience that I've had. Do you see what I'm saying? And your audience doesn't want to know just the absolute right thing. They want to know your opinion on it. A good example of this, a, a great example of this, is last night, y'all, I watched Love is Blind. Uh, that's a whole nother issue, a whole nother, a whole nother topic. But I watched Love is Blind. I watched, like, the reunion part. Y'all, have y'all, I don't want to spoil it. So I, I was about to say it. I was like, you know what? There may be somebody on here who ain't seen it. So don't leave. I'm not going to spoil it. But I want you guys to watch it all, all the way through. And I just remember, like, on TikTok afterwards, like, I hopped on TikTok and so many people have different perspectives. That doesn't mean anybody's wrong. It just means like maybe their upbringing and who they are helped them form that opinion as to how they gathered, you know, the results of what happened. Do you see what I'm saying? So we all have different opinions and your audience is tuned into you because they want to know your opinion on something. They want to know if you have to use ads in order to grow in order to grow your business. They want to know if you have to, I don't know do positive parenting to be a good parent. That's just an example. I saw it on TikTok. Um, so anyway, like, you know what I mean? Like, they want to know your experiences. They want to know... My camera's dying. Okay. How are we about to do this? Okay, hold on. Let me... I don't even know. Ooh, it's probably about to look crazy. Hold on. We got to get situated over here. Pause. Technical difficulties. Next time, charge your camera, Andrea. Okay, if this looks crazy, I apologize. It's we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to make it work. Let me see. Ooh, it doesn't look crazy. Okay, perfect. Let me turn that one off. Okay, okay, okay. cool, cool, cool. So anyway, um, that was freak out, avoid it. What the heck? Anyway, so I forgot what I was saying. Oh, anyway, just different perspectives, you guys. There's different perspectives with it. So yes, make an evidence list to prove to yourself as of why you were qualified to talk about what you're talking about. Um, it's okay to not feel qualified, but I promise you, if you put yourself out there, that's how you're going to start overcoming that. Don't get stuck in your head and think, oh, well, if I just sit here and work it out in my head, it's going to get, no, 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 no. Like start like actively doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing. And I promise you it'll, it'll help you in the process of getting over it. Um, so, okay. Long lived my camera live video stream because my battery died and like, oh, that was cute. But this doesn't look horrible, so I'm not too mad about it. It kind of looks better, honestly. Anyway, um, yeah, so maybe more so just increasing my confidence. Yeah, and I think, again, just don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Just, like, post and see how it feels. You know what I mean? Like, it's your experience. Y'all don't mind my bookshelf. I literally have my, <laughs> I have my camera stacked on a stack of books. It's a lot going on over here. Um, okay, I think someone over here said something. Okay, yes. Did you struggle with imposter syndrome? Yes. So anyway, you guys, like I asked you guys what's keeping you guys from going all in on social media. I know we've been on a rabbit trail, but the whole reason why I asked that is because a lot of times we allow those reasonings, I'm not even gonna call them excuses because they're real. Like we allow those reasonings and those fears and those thoughts to hold us back from jumping into the thing that God has called us to do, right? If God has given us a business. And we need to get this business in front of people. And we don't have a lot of like, we don't have a lot of like revenue. 
in order to do that. We don't have a lot of profit already in order to do that, but we need to find a way to get our products and services in front of people, in front of people consistently, right? What's the best way to do that for free? Social media, right? Um, ooh, I'm nervous to disappoint my audience. Ooh, okay. Is your first name Michaela? I am Kia, or is it Kia? Let me know what your first name, first name is. I think this is great. And thank one, thank you for commenting. I want to know though, is it that you're afraid to disappoint your audience or are you afraid to disappoint yourself? Or are you afraid to disappoint someone that you know? Hey, Kia girl. Are you afraid to disappoint somebody that you know is watching, right? Because to be honest, your audience, and, and you may already have an audience, okay? If you already have an audience, avoid what I'm about to say. This is for anybody else that doesn't. A lot of times we're thinking, of, oh, but my audience, my audience, your audience may not even be there yet. So you're not disappointing them because your people are going to find you. Then once you start making content and you're like, you already have all that laid out, you can't disappoint them. You know what I mean? Like, because they're there because of you and the content that you share. So there is no disappointment like happening there. So I just wonder sometimes, um, for example, I used to be like, oh, well, I'm afraid you know, to be on social media. And it's like, was it that I was afraid or was it like, or like, or was that like the level one of it? And I had to go a step deeper. Oh, it's, I'm afraid of my family member seeing the content. Oh, a step deeper. I'm afraid of this like specific cousin reliving this experience that happened that they were involved in. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I'm not saying that's you, Kia, at all. I'm saying this as a blanket statement because that happened to one of my clients where she was afraid to really share her story because someone in her family was directly tied to why, like what she was kind of sharing and she didn't really want to bring embarrassment and stuff like that. So I just, I would love to know where you're kind of coming from. It's like, I'm nervous to disappoint my audience. Has, have you ever, has anybody ever told you, and this is another point, has anyone ever told you, you disappointed me? Like in your audience? Has anyone ever told you that? Hey, outside of a troll. Okay, trolls don't count. Block them. Move on. Boop. Bye. Right? Has anyone ever realistically told you, mm, this video was a disappointment? Like for real. Most likely no. Most likely no. But maybe, maybe you've heard it in other, in other places and it kind of transcends over to social. I don't know. I don't know. Not for everybody else too. I'm not saying that you can at all. No? Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure. So... Are you, wait, are you saying no to like somebody like being like, oh, this video was a disappointment? Is that what you're, that what you're saying no to? I think that's what you're saying no to. You said LOL. Um, <laughs> Zara. <laughs> Girl, get out of Crumble, y'all. I haven't been a like random switch. Zara and snack break. Um, <laughs> I love me some Crumble cookie, you guys. And I have not had Crumble in a very long time. I did check their website today. They didn't have any things I wanted, so... I'm just going to pretend it's self-discipline, the reason why I ain't go. <laughs> it's really because I don't like their flavors. Um, so, yeah, most likely you haven't had somebody that says, mm, girl, I'm a part of this audience, and I didn't ex I expect it better. Ain't nobody said that. You know what I mean? Like, ain't nobody really in their right mind said that to you, girl. Nobody's probably said that. And a lot of times we are afraid. <laughs> a lot of times we're afraid of things like we're, we're putting these ideas in our heads of like, oh, what could happen? Oh, this person's gonna say this. No, most likely it's because you looked at somebody else's content and you thought that, or you looked at some, you looked at your own content and thought that. You know what I mean? Just a thought. Yes, I think you. Yeah, you're definitely probably in your head, girl, and it's okay. Like you are not alone. I am promise you. I am not attacking you. I'm also talking to myself too, boo. Like, mm -mm. I definitely get that because there's so you know how, especially like us women. Let's be real. Sometimes we can like ha like build up these whole things in our heads these whole scenarios and they don't even where is it coming from where is the truth where is the truth in this has it ever happened before no okay then okay boom that's a thought we need to cast out move on you know what I mean sometimes we have to have a real honest to god conversation with ourselves be like hey Andrea boo Mindset-wise, mm -mm. you letting it get to you. So we don't need to pray about it and then move on. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you got to fire and hire yourself back on. Because <laughs> sometimes our thought processes be off. And so anyway, I say that to say, it's like, let's think about what, what's the fact, what's really happening. 
know what I mean? Because our mind likes to keep us safe. Our mind likes to keep us like in the same place because that, that's safety for us. So when we jump into something new and it's nerve wracking, that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's new. It just means it's different. You know what I mean? It sounds funny saying it out loud. A thousand percent, right? A thousand percent. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yes. <laughs> and it's okay. I, I, I promise you, you are not the only one in your head. Like, I know you're over here on Instagram, but I'm I, people over here on YouTube are saying the same thing as you as well. And I'm saying the same thing, too. Like, yeah, you probably are in your head, but so are the rest of us. And it's okay. Like, there's a lot of, as we grow and as we scale, a lot of people think that, oh, I need to fix my mindset and then jump into this. I'm telling you guys, as you grow, as you start making more money, as you start putting yourself in front of more people, like, it's just a new level of mindset you're going to have to battle. You know what I mean? It's just a new level of mindset. It doesn't mean it's going to be, like, inexistent. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's a new level. Like, mindset is one of those things you have to constantly be working on. Um, thank you for commenting, Kia. I really hope you do not feel like I jumped on you, boo. Because that was not my mindset. Okay. <laughs> thank you for commenting. Um, let me see. Cheryl, you said my hold back is time. This is why I'm leaving my full-time job in January 2023 to dedicate, yeah, excuse me, my day to my calling. In the meantime, I'm coming up with ideas for content. I, ooh, excuse me. I love this. I think, too, when it comes to time, like, there is a real thing. <laughs> yeah, you said, no, I love it here. Oh, my God. I love you being here, too, boo. Um, <laughs> um, I will say, whenever it comes to time, a lot of times we have more time than we think. A lot of times we have more time than we think. And I'm not saying you don't, Cheryl. This is for everybody else. Like, whenever y'all comment, I want you guys to know if I reply, and, like, I'm replying as a vast, I'm replying so that everybody can hear. Because, a, like, one of the biggest objections, like, some of the biggest objections you will have is, like, there's top three, is price, time, and is it worth it, right? So time, obviously, is one of those top three, which is why we're addressing that. A lot of times we have far more time than we think. We just want to use that time to watch TV with it. We just want to use that time. Mm-hmm. We want to use that time and like chill. We want to use that time and do back end stuff that's not moving the needle in our businesses, right? Anybody, or is that just me? Or is that just me? Let me know. Someone, anybody? <laughs> I was gonna say somebody, anybody. Everybody scream from TikTok. Anyway, y'all ever say like a TikTok reference and somebody don't get it and it'd be awkward and you're like, okay, never mind. Um. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see so yeah if you feel like sorry y'all if you feel like time is one of your biggest issues that is understandable okay especially when you have a full-time job especially when you may have kids you may have you know your marriage you may have other things that you are tending to but I promise you if you are diligent about it you can find two hours in your day to, to create some content not not sorry not in your day in your week to create content I promise you that I promise you can carve out something you can carve out something. It doesn't have to be in the best background. None of that. Pop up in your car. Pop up in your car and say something. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, a thousand percent. I use my downtime to sleep, girl. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. Not everybody has. This is not true for everybody. But for, for the people who I'm talking to, which is me, because <laughs> I've used time as an excuse in the past. It's not an excuse for everybody because real, there's real time like working you got to do. You know what I mean? A thousand percent. But for the people who this is like one of those like reasons while we're thinking and it's really just kind of another reason to put it off. That's who I'm speaking to. So no, Cheryl, you a thousand percent get a pass on this one. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. OK, let's talk about that. Working in versus on your business. A lot of times, you guys, as a CEO of your business. Yes, a thousand percent, a thousand percent. That's that's actually what I used to do is I used to take time off from my full-time job and have a content day. I used to literally take time off. And people were like, oh, where are you going? Oh, girl, going on vacation. Going, mm, girl, I, it'd be right at home in my living room filming videos. Like, for real, like, take, like, so that that is an option. That's a great, that's a great suggestion for anybody else, too. Like, Cheryl is about to leave her job, so she good, she good. It's for everybody else. Um, so, yes, there is other ways to go about it. You guys, I personally use my Saturday mornings as filming time. Just in case, again, time, price, and is it worth it are the three top objections. So that's why we're tackling time because, uh, Cheryl, you mentioned time. Um, so yes, I use my Saturdays as filming days. Is that ideal every Saturday? No. Do I want to be chilling on a Saturday? Yeah. 
but it's the best time. <laughs> um, ooh, stepping on your toes, girl. Yes. Uh, love this. <laughs> Uh, okay, yes, working in versus on your business a thousand percent. As a CEO, it is your job to work work both in and on your business. But let's talk about how it is so easy to work on the back end of stuff, to work on the on the stuff that is not gonna be seen really, okay? And put off doing the things that are like needle moving activities, like right? revenue generating activities, right? So whenever we plan out our 2023, we like to think through, okay, what are the things that are revenue generating for us? content, live videos, launching. You see what I'm saying? So if we have that in mind, we need to think through, okay, why would I then spend six months working on a website like I did last year? Okay. Calling myself out. Okay. Calling myself out. And I already had the conversation with myself. Um, <laughs> but I asked that question because sometimes we literally, we are afraid to do the, the needle moving activities. We're afraid to do the money generating activities. And I think once we get to the bottom of why we are afraid to do those things, what's holding us back from doing those things, then we can actually show up and do the things that are actually mattering. I'm not saying your website doesn't matter. I honestly think your website matters. I do. I do. I do think your website matters. Um, I do think like building out your course on the back end matters. I do think building out your program on the back end matters. But all I'm saying, no, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about is when you're working on stuff that is literally just kind of like busy work. You know what I mean? Kind of like busy work. Okay. Anybody else? Can I get an amen in the comments? Anyone? Um, <laughs> yes. A thousand percent. You said I am good at planning, but it's like pulling teeth to execute for me. A thousand percent. And I want to know why. Anybody else? I know this is me sometimes. Again, I'll be having to check myself. Okay, boo, you said you were going to do this. You said you're going to no, you show up, do the thing. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, avoidance. Yes. Why do you feel like you're avoided? Uh, enriched by Milan. Why do you feel like you're, it's like pulling teeth for you to execute as well. Shots fired a thousand percent shots fired. I want to know why, like, why do you feel like that? Like what, what scares you? Is it because you are afraid of like selling your offer? Is it because you're afraid of putting yourself out there? Is it afraid you're afraid to post content? You know what I mean? Is it because you feel like if I'm, well, if I'm just, if I'm, if I'm busy, if I just stay busy, that means I'm working. You know what I mean? That means I'm just, that's a lie. Okay. That is a lie. I've fell into that lie as well. Okay. Okay. Um, hamster, yes. Hamster on uh, her wheel going, going, but going nowhere. A thousand percent. Yes. Yes, and that is also why, yeah, mm, I want you to come DM me over on Instagram. I would love to chat with you through this. So, in Rich by Milan, you said, scared if my offer is good enough. Let's talk about that. I'm telling you guys, let me tell you something real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Real tea, okay? When I tell you guys, there are so many people. Yes, right? There are so many people that are selling things and like having massive success with them. And they are way like their, their offers are like include way less than yours do. Okay. Their products do way less than yours do, but they're just, they just have the courage to go after. They have the courage to put it out there. Therefore, to all the people who are needing that thing, that's the best solution because they're not, they don't even know you exist yet because you're not showing up, right? So yes, like scared of, scared if my offer is good enough. I'm telling, so I heard this quote, y'all. This is from a while. I don't know if it was in, whenever I, I, you know, one of my counseling sessions or what it was, a book or something like that. But it was like bad people, like it, whenever you ask yourself, am I a bad person or whatever? And I heard it was like bad people don't worry about if they're bad people. Okay, whenever it comes to your offer, and I and the thing is, is I do this as well, which is why there are times when I'm refining my program and I go back through my program. And I'm like, no, heck no, girl, get out of your head. This this program is worth twelve thousand dollars and above, like twelve thousand dollars minimum. That is not what we charge. We charge well under that. But yes, shots are fired. All in the comments. Boom. I, let me let me get my uh. Hold on. Let me get my sound effects. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Where are my sound effects at? Hold on, because y'all. Mm -mm. Where are they at? Is this it? 
<laughs> okay, perfect. We're gonna use that whenever there is something to use it for. I'll be forgetting about my little uh, a little sound effects or whatever. Um, yes, but anyway, so I'm saying that because you guys, there are so many people who have very subpar offers, but because they are consistent, they are showing up, people know who they are, they are visible, their stuff is getting sold and in the hands of people who need something like that. And they would love to have somebody like you to work with. They would love to have somebody like you to buy from. But boo, you ain't know where to be found. We don't even know you exist, boo. We don't even know whatever you have to offer is out there. And that is a huge issue. But then you're wondering why, well, I'm not making sales. I'm not. Okay. It, okay. All right. And let me tell y'all something. What I like to do too is I like to be real, real with myself. If I'm ever in my head and I'm like, oh my God, I'm not getting followers. Or, oh my God, we didn't hit our client limit. Or, oh my God, whatever it is, okay? I will write down, what are all the things that I did to lead to that moment? What are all the things? What are the things I actually did? So how many live videos did I do? How many social media posts did I post? And, what, and like most of the time, really all of the time that I've done this, you guys, every single time I've showed up more in my head than I have in actual like real life, in reality. I've showed up more in my head. Okay, it's been more, oh, well, I was thinking about social media, but I ain't do it, though. I ain't do it, though, girl. I was thinking about it. I ain't do it. Another TikTok reference, if you, if you didn't get that. Um, <laughs> yes, don't feel attacked, boo. It's okay. We are family here. You can be vulnerable. It, it's okay. It's okay. You got that whole ebook. You got that whole program, that whole course. Hold on, where's my sound effects? <laughs> You got all that stuff. <laughs> you got all that stuff that you have to offer, but are afraid to sell it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's okay. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. Selling can feel weird, but I promise you, if you come from a place of serving over selling, it will drastically transform your mindset. Also, if you get into an actual coaching program that program that can teach you how to sell because sell is a skill so it's also a contact sport so if you are not getting in front of people and having conversations with them conversations lead to conversions okay if you're not having conversations with them if you are not being seen and being visible how the heck you think you're about to reach these uh revenue goals what mm -mm. girl bye bye no not happening and then don't be mad and then try to give up on the business that God gave you, boo. No, put in the work that you're supposed to be putting in to get where you need to go. Okay, thank you, thank you, good night. Okay, <laughs> yes, um, I just said this today. I struggle with the visibility piece of social media. Girl, DM me, come join the program, come apply. Um, speaking of, since we're talking about this, you guys, Infinite Audience is open for enrollment. It literally helps you. We, li It's a, let me start over. I'm, I'm hyped up now. It is a, um, it is my signature group coaching program that helps you get visible, get in front of a global audience. And not only that, take people from not knowing who you are, to being part of your community to them being a client or customer within your actual ecosystem. Okay. And then building ambassadors, building that community, building those people that are going to advocate for you. Okay. That is huge. So if that's what you're wanting, infinite audience is open for enrollment. You literally can DM me the word infinite or um, go to my don't know, blah, 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 what? Go to the link in my bio. I don't know if I can say that or if it's gonna like flag my live video, whatever. Uh, go to the link in my bio and then you literally can apply there. I will tell you guys, enrollment closes on November 21st, or once all seven spots are filled. We have two spots filled, okay? So if you were interested in, in enrollment just opened, so if you're interested, I highly recommend do yourself a favor. Check out the application page. If the application page resonates with you, then I want you to come and apply. Don't disqualify yourself, okay? If you're going through the page and you have nine out of the 10 things on the page, you got eight out of the 10 things that we talk about, then apply, okay? Don't disqualify yourself. Let, like, let's have a conversation to see if it's a good fit. I promise you, if it's not a good fit, I will not let you into the program. Our, our like access granted rate is about 20%, okay? So don't worry. If it's not for you right now, you won't get in and it's okay. But at least do yourself a favor and apply, okay? At least apply, apply, apply. If you have questions, just DM me over on Instagram. Um, so yes, when it comes to visibility, when it comes to selling your stuff, when it sells to, when it comes to getting out there, also the link is right here over on YouTube. Um, but when it comes to getting out there, you guys, you gotta be visible. Hey boo, you gotta be visible. You have to be seen. You have this amazing product, this amazing service, and don't nobody know what it is. 
Don't nobody know it exists. But they know that that your competitor's product, it exists. Because she's been going all in on social media, boo. Okay? Now she is she has ramped up her profit that she can now run ads if she wants to, right? And she booming. But your stuff is way better. Your stuff is way better. But you're not willing to get up and put it out there despite the imposter syndrome, despite the fear, despite the whatever else mindset junk that is causing you not to show up. I'm telling you guys, if you want to get visible, social media is your place to do it. And you don't have to have the, the overall strategy all that stuff right now, that is the point of our program. We're going to teach you that and actually how to sell. That is huge. That is a skill that I have to learn over time. And I would love to show you guys the process of which to do that on social media while still remaining who you are, infusing your personality, being fun, and just yourself, your unique self in front of your audience. That's huge. Okay. So if that's what you're interested in, come and check it out. Um, <laughs> these sound effects remind me of the club's in New York City back in the seven or oh, the 1700s. Oh my god, the 70s. Yes, <laughs> y'all. When I got Ecamm Live, this is the system I used to uh, go live on. It came with all these. Let's test it out. Oh, oh, mm, I don't like that one. Mm-mm. I like that one. I like that one. We're probably gonna use that one. Probably gonna use that one. The applause. <laughs> The horn. There's like a bicycle horn. I don't like that one. I'm going to use that for it. Anyway. Anyway, y'all. The enrollment to the program is open. If you're interested, come DM me. Let's have a conversation about it. But I'm saying all of this to say is, again, sales is the contact for it. If you are not showing up, if you're not getting your face out there, if you're not getting your product or service out there, do not expect people to enroll in your program. They don't even know it exists. They don't even know your product is the most bomb product out there. They don't even know it exists. But if you're not showing up, if you're not going to run paid ads, you have to understand what is your marketing strategy going to be. And if you are starting out, I highly recommend for you to go organic, go organic. And, and honestly, people who run ads, like ads experts, will still even encourage you on the exact same thing to go organic first. Because if you go organic, you then know what works to then create ads that then work later. You know what I mean? But if you start ad wise, you're going to be using the money to test it out as you go. So start organic. If you are starting out, go organic social media content, post it, get it out there. There are people looking for you right now, but they don't know you exist. So they're going with somebody else who has a subpar answer to their question and they're not even getting served in the way they need to be served. Hey, yes. If you feel like God called you to YouTube, then go for it. Go for it. No more discussion even needed. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. Hey, what's up y'all? Uh, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> you guys are just now joining. We're talking about if God, if God called you to start your business, why are you playing so small on social media? That's what we're talking about today. Um, there's the power of social media in general. And like I said in the very beginning, guys, social media is a powerful tool. And there's a reason why people hire people just to do social media. There's a reason why these companies out here have like influencers in their network and social media managers, a part of their team. Social media is huge. There's a reason for it. And the fact that you can pick up your camera, the fact that I can literally talk to you guys through a camera right now and we can build this community together, that is huge. You have the ability to get in front of this audience. Okay. So what if you, so let, let's paint this picture. What if you started posting social media or what if you started posting content on social media, right? Your goal is to gain more clients, gain more customers for your business. But in the meantime, you started posting on YouTube, which once you started posting on YouTube, YouTube, you, you got to your thousand subscriber threshold. You're good to go. You can now, yes, you can now literally decide to monetize your content. Once you monetize your content, boom, now you're making content and you're now getting paid for that same content. That is now providing value and also converting clients to customers. Huh? Thank you very much. And then on top of that, there are brands who are like, oh, I love her content. I love his content. We want to work with them. We want to work with her. Right? And then you get brand deals on top of that. You guys, there are multiple streams of income when it comes to social media. I'm not saying you have to do all of them. I'm not saying you have to do all of them, a thousand percent. But I am saying, why not grab the low-hanging fruit? Why not grab the low-hanging fruit? If you, are, if you are wanting to learn how to market your business, 
then starting on social media is the place. You do not want to start testing out ads when you're wasting thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of ad dollars trying to test something out rather than going organic first. You know what I mean? Um, oh, yes. Uh, I love that. Look at guy working. Do what he do. Okay. Yes. I love it. It's saying in a great way. No, I love that so much. I love it. I love it. Yes. Come and apply. Come DM me after this. I will. Me screenshot <laughs> that way I can make sure I can follow up with you as well but yes DM me come say hi um and let's talk about what your business like about your business and stuff like that to see if you'd be a good fit I would love it um yes you definitely can so yes you guys what else what now what questions do you guys have I've been having a headache all day and I don't know why um I feel like I either slept wrong my neck seems tight I need a massage honey I'm about to work that into the budget Monthly massage. Mm -mm. I need a massage. Um, <laughs> uh, what else? What else? Let me make sure I didn't miss anything else. Uh, yes, we talked about avoidance on social media. Like, like, what is some of the reasons why you struggle with like showing up on social media? But like avoidance, we talked about that. We talked about um, the rich by Milan. You said I'm good at planning, but it's like pulling teeth to execute for me. I can't remember if we went all the way in on this. We probably did, but I'm gonna come back to it. Um, whenever it comes to planning, you guys, I promise you, you will learn so much more getting out in front of the camera rather than being behind it. Being out in front of the computer rather than being behind it, strategizing, thinking, planning, coming up with all the little ideas, and there's no action. Okay, because I'm telling you guys, like. I've done this before and I'll be like, why aren't we, you know, I wanted to hit this subscriber level or this subscriber um, amount by this, you know, time period. And then I really think about it and I really start again, I get real and I start writing down, okay, how many videos did I post? How many, you know, whatever happened. And I look and I'm like, okay, wait, you only posted four videos in two months. That's not, that wasn't the plan. That wasn't the goal. And you realize that you were thinking you were living more in your head than you were in real life. Right. And so anyway, I still have that to say. It's like, let's show up, okay? If God has called you to the business that he's called you to, and if he needs you to be showing up consistently, then what is a better platform to do that? Except for YouTube. I'll wait. I'll wait. TikTok is real enticing, though. We may be on TikTok in 2023, okay? However, YouTube will and probably will always be our number one platform as long as it is around. YouTube has been very good to us. Amen and hallelujah. Um, <laughs> so yes, you guys, like I want you guys to have, and I was, again, I was saying my clients this, like, uh, I think, yeah, we had a coaching call on Tuesday. Um, uh, I said my clients this, you guys, whenever it comes to like the, say, say we have a hundred, there's like a hundred percent of something. I want you guys to be spending 10% of that as planning and strategizing. Planning and strategizing are important. So you know the way to go, you know, the direction, all that stuff. But I want that, that other 90% of this to be action that you are taking to be action steps that you are walking towards, okay? If you have a goal, and this is something else we, like I'm gonna make probably a whole separate video about this. If you have a goal that you wanna get to, you guys, it's not just gonna be handed to you. You're not gonna get to 1,000 subscribers by thinking your way through it. You're not. There's actions you have to take. There's steps you have to take in order to get there. So like, let's think that through, okay? Stop, stop, stop living in your head let's start living out loud living in like in life in like realness of the thing you know what i mean you have a goal to hit a thousand subscribers by x date how many videos have you posted how many live videos have you done you know what i mean how many times have you promoted people from your youtube channel or from your instagram to come over to your youtube channel what what's happening here you see what i'm saying like we have to stop living in our own heads and then being mad of the results that are not happening because of the, the actions we did not do, the things that we did not do, right? You want to lose weight, you got to do some things to get there. You did some things to, to gain weight, you got to do some things to get it off. You feel me? Thank you, right? A thousand percent. So yes, like, like you guys, and I'm saying this as a, I can't tell you nothing that I haven't done before. This has been me, okay? I have been living in my head and then being like, wait a minute <laughs> why aren't we at this amount of subscribers yet why aren't we here yet why hasn't this goal came to pass and then when i really do like an, an audit 
on myself, a CEO audit on myself, on our marketing, on our sales, all that stuff. Like whenever we do an overall audit and we really look at it, I'm like, oh, well, that's why. That's why, right? And yesterday we talked about the power or or the the cost of an action. The cost of an action, you guys. What is the cost of an action for you? The cost of an action for you could be you're going to be in the same place. And I'm not speaking this over you, so don't receive this. But that you could be in the same place two years from now that you are right now. And that's going to be your cost of an action. And now your like regret is not a part of that cost of an action. Okay? So if you get up and start now, two years to now, two, oh my God, I can talk. Two years from now, you're not going to be like, dang, I wish I would have started whenever I started a live video of Andrea talking about, you know, cost of an action. You know what I mean? There was someone on here the other day who said, I've been wanting to start a YouTube channel for five years. Huh? Are you sure that that's something you really want to do? Or is that something that you just like have on? Because if you really wanted to do it, it probably would have been done by now. What is stopping you? What is stopping you? And let me be honest, you guys, you got to be a little delirious. If you want to hold on to blind faith, it don't make sense. It don't make sense. No. But like if you're going to be a business owner, one of the most illogical things you can do is to become an entrepreneur. <laughs> Is to become an entrepreneur, okay? You are spending countless hours. You're spending money to do something in a way that is serving somebody else, right? And you don't even know if it's going to pay off in the end. That is probably one of the most illogical things you can do, okay? However, there's a reason why we do it. There's faith that is required. There's something on the other side that we want. We want that impact. We want to be able to have the freedom to choose because now we have extra revenue that we can choose, Right? We, we have that ability. So think about that in terms of like, what is the cost of an action overall, you guys? Right? Like, mm-mm. People, like a lot of people are like, oh, starting YouTube channel is hard. Yeah, people, so is being broke. Huh? What? So is like two years from now being mad I didn't start back then. Huh? No. Mm-mm. Dash is walling out like normal. Um, <laughs> yes, faith without works is dead. A thousand freaking percent. You got, can, can somebody post in the comment section where that verse comes from? Because I've read, I think it's, it's either Hebrews or James. Like the, the whole book is fire. But I always get it mixed up because I think I read through both of them at the same time. Anyway, wherever that verse is, faith without works is dead. If you read through all of it, you guys. It talks about Moses and how he showed his faith by his actions. Y'all, that's huge. So like walk out your faith. Walk out the thing that God has called you to do in action, in actual steps. And if you don't know the very next step, if you want an actual proven process, one, pray about it. Two, see if God has somebody that will come alongside you to help. I did not get here by myself. I am not self-made and I don't personally believe anybody is. I'm not self-made. Remember my parents died? I needed somebody to come alongside me and grab me, okay? One, God. Two, my family. You know what I mean? I am not self-made. Oh my God, I'm God's girl. We are not self-made over here. We are God-made, God-driven. No. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yes, a thousand percent. Oh, gee, I had this conversation last night. Literally confirmation, a thousand percent. Like, I don't believe self-made is a thing. It can be for people who may really think that, but I really challenge you to think through, are you really self-made? Because I know good and bad, well, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for the power of God, if it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't for my family, my community, my people. What? Mm -mm. No. Thank you. James 2, 17. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, Yeah, no, we're not self-made over here. I've had coaches, phenomenal coaches that have literally grabbed me by the hand and helped me Like, fulfill the dream, the vision that God placed inside of me. I'm not self-made, right? Nobody is. Beyonce is not self-made. She has a freaking large team around her. She had her family. Yes, her voice is amazing, but who gave her that voice? Now, I'm kind of mad God didn't give me that voice, but whatever. It's fine. We ain't got no beef on it. It's fine. Whatever. Would have loved to have Beyonce's voice, but anyway. I digress, but y'all get what I'm trying to say, right? Like, like you need a community. 
entrepreneurship is about the loneliest thing you can ever embark in. If you do not have a community around you, I promise you, you will quit before you even get started and you don't even realize it. You will quit before you even get started if you don't have a community around you. This crap is hard. <laughs> it's hard and it's okay. But like we, like for us in this community, y'all, we don't use hard, like it's not hard as a prerequisite to anything. It can be hard and we still do it. It's going to be hard and we still do it. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't mean anything. And so, okay. Anyway. <laughs> so yes, y'all. Mm -mm. And especially if God's called you to something very specific, like, Y'all, I was telling the story yesterday, and there's a pastor, I think uh, it's Pastor Mike Todd who said this, God either gives you the mountaintop, excuse me, and not the path, or he gives you the path and not the mountaintop. And the way God, God made me, so he knows me more than anybody, obviously. And what he knows is if he gave me that mountaintop, most likely, I would have tried to get to that mountaintop way before it was time, okay? So he, <laughs> I realized that he literally gives me the steps. And at this point, because I've tried to run ahead, even ahead of the steps, I'm like, God, just give me the very next step for it. Just give me the very next step. I don't even need the, the two step. I just need one step. Just let me know. And he's let me know. And I'm walking in that. You know what I mean? So what has God called you to do? If God has called you to start your business, if he has given that, giving you that vision, that what your business could bring, right? Because your vision, yes, is about impact and the lives you can change through your business a thousand percent. But it's also about the lives you can change around you through the extra revenue you start to generate right? It's about the fact that you now have bigger investment ability. You now have the ability to choose where you live. You see what I'm saying? You now have the ability to decide, do I eat this food or this food? You don't have to be stuck in that one compartment of what you have to do. You know what I mean? Money gives you options. Money gives you the power of choice. You see what I'm saying? And to think, and like, I know money is like one of those, I know some, some of our uh, booties is tight because Money is one of them conversations people get a little, little weird about. Let me tell y'all something. If God is the provider of all resources, why would he want, of all people, why would he want Christians, his people, to be without? Huh? Money is a tool. And I know there's a verse that talks about, that people think says, money is the, the root of all evil. And hear me when I say this, and if you don't hear nothing else I say tonight, it is not money that is the root of all evil. It is not, or else churches wouldn't be able, churches literally wouldn't use it to build the kingdom. Churches wouldn't take tithes and offerings. Nonprofits wouldn't need money, right? That is not the verse. The verse is, we have to be very specific on this. The verse is, it is the love of money that is the root of all evil. It is the heart that is the root of all evil. So you guys, just in case you're thinking whenever it comes to money that that's an issue, I promise you. Think again. Think again. Like, look around you. It takes money to build everything that you see around you, right? So think about that, you guys. Yes, you've built your business to have the impact and to change, to change lives. But again, you've built your business to also change the lives of yourself and everybody else around you. My personal goal is to make a million and give a million. That is my personal goal. And to give back, give back to my hometown. Like, these are my goals. But guess what? What I'm going to give back to them if I, it, you know I mean if I ain't got it? I got to make a million to give a million. That's a part of my, my goal, right? So if I make a million, I want to give a million. That is, that's a part of my goal, and that has a money tie with it. You see what I'm saying? Yes, the love of money is the root of all evil. Thank you, a thousand percent. I just know a lot of people, a lot of specifically Christian people struggle with this. So I just had to talk about it. So anyway, you guys, my head is hurting. We've been on here for a whole hour. How? I swear to y'all, these live videos will be like 20 minutes. And then I. But anyway, no, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys in the comments. Yes. Again, if you're interested in infinite audience, if you want to know how to grow your overall impact, if you want to have a global audience and get in front of a global audience on a consistent basis, and then from there, build your evergreen marketing machine using the power of YouTube and building up your evergreen like funnels going from your YouTube channel into your business, if that is you, if you're even like, mm, I think it's me, it's a thought in your head, then I want you to come check out the application page. I want you to then, once you look at the application page, if you decide, yo, this resonates with me, I want you to then apply to the program. Okay, don't disqualify yourself. If you only fit seven of the 10 items, that's okay, still apply. Don't disqualify yourself. 
If you if if the majority of the page is applying to you, then I encourage you to apply because from there we're then going to hop on a next step call to make sure this is the best next step for you. OK, and that call is literally to decide what is the best next step for you. It is not to decide not to make you say yes or make you say no. None of that It's literally I'm in it to decide what's the best next step for you. OK, so if you're interested in the program, again, here's the link right there. AndreaDenise.com slash infinite. And over here on Instagram, it is also pinned in the comment section, but you can also DM me the word infinite from there. All right, you guys, I love you to the moon and back. And as always, I'm rooting for you. And you guys, it is Thursday, right? Yes. Yeah, so I'll see you guys on Tuesday, next Tuesday, for another live video at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, you guys. So I love you again, and I will see y'all then, I guess. <laughs> Bye, y'all.